Hi, welcome to my video tutorial. Today I'm looking at Dragon Naturally Speaking 12.5 Professional. And I want to look at the macros and scripting options in the command browser and add new command. Really useful. But today I'm only going to be looking at text macros. So first thing we need to do is go to the Dragon Bar at the top and select the Tools menu first. Then we need to go down to Command Browser. I want to show you the Command Browser first because that's where all your commands and scripts are stored. Look on the left here, Mode Panel. You can also access the Mode Panel from there. You can choose Browse, Manage or Script. It's currently on Script because it's not highlighted anymore. These are all my script commands and macros I have stored. If I go to Browse, that will have all my commands stored for different applications. So if I go to the context of the command, currently on Global as you can see, if I click the drop down menu, I could choose Microsoft Paint which I've not added any yet, but you can add your own scripts or you can use Outlook as well. You can actually use the keyword filter as well, which I'll show you for example. If I go back to global commands, you might want to look for a specific command in global commands. You don't have to sift through them all. It can be quite annoying. So let's use the command open and add that to the current list. Now when I click done, it's going to check all my global commands for any command with open in it. And there you go and there's all my commands we've opened in it. Really easy to find stuff quickly. But today I'm looking at scripting, so I'll click the script option and these are the current scripts I've got stored. I'll go into this in a later date, for example, this little icon here, where I could use keystrokes to, to create commands. This is what we're going to be looking at here, which is text macros as well. And these little icons indicate advanced scripting. So let's make a start. So I need to close the browser, I'm going to go to Tools and go to Add New Command. Before we do anything in this interface, I want you to go down to Command Type because you need to choose what macro or scripting options you want to use. Now if I click the drop down menu here, today we're looking at text and graphics macros, but you can also use Macro Recorder. You click the Record button here on the right and it will actually record each step you do and save it as a command. Really useful. Step by step, Again, that's using keystrokes. You add them in step by step. And last of all, which is the best, is the linear format of adding your commands in scripting. You've got more control of what you actually want to do with that. It's a really good option. But today, I'm just looking at text and graphics macros. So I'm going to click off that. So I've got to choose what command I want to do. I usually have to, which is a bit of a pain, dictate out my address. So why don't I create a command for my address? So when I say the command my address, it's created automatically for me. You could use it for office address or what you want. So I'm going to go up to my command name. So I'm just going to call this my address. Of course, you could put my office address or my home address if you want to. And again, the description is exactly the same as the command name, but you can add a description there if you want as well. If I go down to group quickly, you can group your commands into specific folders. So when you open up command browser, you can access them quickly and find them in categories. Really useful once you start building up your scripts and macros. The option here, availability, is global, application specific, or window specific. Global means that that command, my address, will work anywhere. Emails, on the web, wherever you want. Application specific, as the command says, will only work on certain applications you choose. You might just want it to work in, say, Word. And window specific is a window within an application, so you can actually choose a specific window for that command to work. Next option is actually the context window. Now, before I actually go into the content window, I need to show you this option here. Add in your fonts. If I click on that. Now, there's a really important option here when you're adding your fonts. If I pre-choose a font here, and I use the command in Word and say my address, it will create that command in a font I've chose here. Which is great if I want to use a specific font. But what happens if you're doing a letter or a CV and you want to keep continuity within your Word document? Then what we need to do is choose plain text option. That way when we say the command, it will export it into Word and it will use the current font that Word's using to keep their continuity. Let me show you what I mean. So I need to put an address in. So I'm going to make one up here.
and there we go so the first thing I need to do where it says my address is train it because you need to train the command and how to say it so if I click train once my address and click done so that's done all I need to do now is click save let's try it out my address go to sleep and as you can see it's used the current font Arial size 12 now if I just open up that go to tools and open up command browser to access that command again remember I need to go to command browser because that's where it's stored so it's scripts that are created so there's script it's already on there it's not highlighted so if I now go down to my address I can now access that command again so if I was to actually untick that and change the font here to a predetermined one I'll try Cooper new line my address go to sleep and there you go learning made easy